I remember I heard a long time ago, the job you're gonna have in the future probably doesn't exist today. And I never thought that would apply to me because I was going to medicine. Never could imagine having a platform where I'm able to talk about healthcare disparities, mentoring, education, while also being a full-time medical student. We think of medicine as objective, and unfortunately it's not. The systems we have today are built on prior beliefs that were unfortunately racist. The work I do right now is all about trying to change narratives, to try and include populations that have been overlooked in history and putting them front and center in medical education. I grew up a little bit north of Seattle in a town called Muckleteo, Washington. Great town, had a great childhood, great education, but I noticed I was the, one of the only black students in class. My parents came from Ghana and they weren't familiar with American culture. And I think they tried to find everything they could from people around them of like, what could make our kids successful here? I was one of those kids that literally did everything in high school. I was student body president. I was a state debate champion, president of honor society. I had a great support system from my family and from teachers. But I always noticed that friends would make these kind of microaggression statements like, El oh, Joel, you're an Oreo, meaning that on the outside I'm black, but on the inside I'm white or acting white. And so I learned from a young age to figure out how do I challenge these types of conversations or things that people are thinking. I will say when I first came to undergrad at Yale, I struggled. My first year, I remember my chemistry class, it was not easy, <laughs> but I met these surgeons at Howard University Hospital, HBCU, seeing how they interact with their patients and how their patients were literally saying things like, you are the first black doctor I've seen, or I'm so glad I have a black doctor. Hearing those words of affirmation to the doctors and having those doctors say those same words to me, telling me that I'm going to be a great doctor one day, was that final push I needed to continue through and stick with medicine in college. One of the reasons I chose Washington State University for medical school is because it's really dedicated towards healthcare disparities. It's how do we make sure that if we can't go to HBCUs, that we still have environments that black students feel comfortable, feel invited and can thrive and succeed. I think a lot about how in the United States, less than 5% of all physicians are black and the intentional historical context behind why that is. Really what got me started was just seeing that these things weren't talked about in a way that was equitable and wanting to use social media and use education in a way to bust medical myths. So after my first year of medical school, we went entirely online because of COVID and I made a video about pulse oximeters, which are these devices that go on your finger and measure your blood oxygen saturation level. Because of differences in how the skin absorbs light, black patients are more than three times as likely to have inaccurate, overestimated oxygen saturation levels compared to white patients. And that has clinical significance for COVID since one of the main diagnostic criteria for COVID-19 is shortness of breath and low oxygen levels. Understanding racial bias in medicine can help save lives. There's a lot of stuff that, unfortunately, doctors and nurses and PAs don't know about that pertains specifically to the Black community because Black communities have been left out of the conversation for so long. When would one of my peers have been able to get that information? Would it be when they're seeing a Black patient for the first time? Why don't we have these conversations more often? So just to give you a little bit of an outline for what we're going to be doing today, the mentor, mentee, greet, and check-in. We're gonna go on to a suture workshop after that. Has anyone sutured before? I knew I wanted to start a mentoring program and the whole goal is really to give students in high school access to resources that may not be available in the medical system. All right, everyone hold up your needle driver for me. And that's what your primary tool for manipulating your needle and driving it through tissue is going to be, okay? Should I turn it over to Dr. Green? Yeah. Uh, Rick Green, I'm a plastic surgeon here in town and I'm just gonna demonstrate how we do this. Mentoring to me is the most important thing. Like, I would not be where I am right now without the mentors I've had to hear about their struggles, how they got there. So thumb, ring finger, and then you're gonna grab it right away, pull it through, and reload it like that. That is how the cool kids do it. So go ahead and try that. This should be fun, there's no right or wrong. I think it's what I do to like refill my cup. You know, like rejuvenates me to see students wanting to get to the same place and being able to like guide them along that path. So that's good. You wanna Kind of cross it over so when you pull it, you okay. Pull it. Now I do it again because we got to do four, four. Now I want to leave a legacy, and so I did things like start a student national medical association, which is dedicated to diversifying the field of medicine. Then I also worked with the admissions office to create programs that would make sure that every single student got an interview because many times students from disadvantaged backgrounds can't have that extra practice. Good to see everyone. How are your weeks? The day-to-day -day of medicine, especially in medical school, as a third-year medical student, varies so much. Your so first baby. Born. Yes, I like, got to deliver my first baby, and it's weird because you do like, the hand over hand, right? I feel like there's so much I still don't understand about it. My friends and I, all are medical students that we live together. 
And so when we come home, we'll have all these stories to tell, but we'll quiz each other on the things that we've learned essentially throughout the day. You probably just, what's it called? The cut? The... Oh, uh, it's just a like transverse uterine incision, but mm -hmm. there's probably a special old white guy name for it. Pro <laughs> <laughs> probably. So. Quiz question. Do you know how many, how, like what's the normal amount of bleeding that you'd see in a mother? And then when would you begin to like worry? Under 500 milliliters. You start with uterine or soft, right? So let's say that's not working. And then you start to go pharmacological. Yeah, Mass, uterine tonic. Mesoprost. So, yeah, so you so your prostol, prostaglandin. And then hema -based. Yeah. yeah. Right now, if you look at medical equations, there is race-based medicine, meaning that if you are a black patient um, and you come in for, for example, testing your kidney functioning, there's going to be an equation if you're black that's different than the equation if you're white. So we have to understand that that exists right now. We can't just jump to a post-racial society and say, let's not look at skin color because the systems and the equations that exist right now do take into account that type of stuff. Last year, I hosted a panel at my school to talk about barriers in higher education right now and how does history actually inform how that occurs. One of my friends saw that panel and he said, how cool would that be if we go to South by Southwest? We put together a proposal and somehow we got chosen. <laughs> so I got to meet Dr. Vivek Murthy. Um, he gave an incredible speech. So thank you so much. And I applied for a secondary panel as well to talk about how social media is being used right now to combat healthcare disparities. And that was with two other medical students who are also doing incredible work. I also hope people realize it's not about attacking individuals. It's about attacking the system overall and dismantling it piece by piece. I want to be the best doctor I can be. So when I look to the future, I see myself as being someone that focuses on medical communication, getting people to better understand their own health, to figure out how do we actually mitigate so many of the racial disparities that exist, ranging from maternal mortality to cancer outcomes, and really making sure that every single medical school is willing and open to making our medical systems more equitable overall. I am Joel Bravel, the medical myth buster, and I'm a cycle breaker.